Hello everyone and welcome to Sea of Thieves podcast episode 8. Uh, we are here just after the, the showing of the Bethesda Xbox Showcase. And we're all sitting around here and I'm going to go around the table and introduce today. I'm going to just wing this as I go. This is going to be a, a, new, a new way of going. So... Starting the, the right here with... Yeah, uh, Joni, executive producer on Sea of Thieves. Oh, <laughs> fancy that. I know. <laughs> I'm Mike Chapman, and I'm creative director on Sea of Thieves. Oh. Uh, I'm John McFarlane, head of creator engagement on Sea of Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> and I am John McMurtry, head of video production, also working on Sea of Thieves. <laughs> and uh, James Bum, social media lead, also Sea of Thieves, surprisingly, yeah. yeah. If you are listening to us, uh, remember you can watch us on YouTube on youtube.com forward slash Sea of Thieves. And if you're not um, watching us or listening to us, then you won't have heard me say this. But <laughs> if you are watching us and you want to continue listening to us, maybe you're on a trip somewhere in your car and you're like, oh, I want to hear this. This is the most complicated <laughs> way of saying it. <laughs> 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 right. Well, then you can listen to us in any reputable podcast app. And remember as well, use the hashtag SOP podcast if you want uh, James to pull up your questions. You can tell he's done this before. (laughs) And if if you're not watching, you're missing John's shirt. (laughs) Uh, Which is, you know, so make sure you check out the YouTube link. We're going for animal print this summer. It's totally in. uh, Full animal print <laughs> good, good I, did, I did not good skin an anaconda for this. <laughs> but we should go around and check in with everybody it's been a whole five weeks um since the last one so what you been up to i haven't done anything actually um <laughs> that's been really really boring yeah that's what the run-up to kind of the xbox bethesda showcase is like you just think about that all the time and you don't you don't have a life basically so that's uh, Scam's Dev. <laughs> the sad thing is, I, I don't think I can even top that. <laughs> <laughs> Had some laurels planted in the garden. Mm. That was fun. Um, hoovered a lot of time. <laughs> um, no, nothing's really happened apart from, yeah, all work related, really. I'd. Uh... We were at the rooftop party. We, were, we had a rooftop, a rooftop party rooftop in my party. building with DJ oh, Tommy so. Conflict oh, yeah. and DJ Tommy Tank. And then. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was that was fun. Did you that just give him two names? Yes. Uh, well, that was Joe's name. It was DJ. It's Tom. a long story. Oh. But we, <laughs> it was an end with his. He's already gone too far. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, that's that's the only highlight of my. Yes, yeah. I mean I, I, I'm not, I haven't been up to much myself either. I um, got my home office uh, sorted. Got a new laptop, new screen. It's looking good. Well, it's still a bit messy, but it's looking alright. But yeah. Can we just blame this current like Heat. mood on me? On oh, it is roasting. <laughs> it is absolutely roasting. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's all coming from John. Like, oh so. right, just moist. moist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because I mean, I would, I would love to remember everything I've done over the past five weeks, but I'm currently just dying from hay fever. So <laughs> like, I don't really have anything. Although I did do a good escape room uh, this week Ooh. in Birmingham, which was, which was pirate themed. Um, oh, nice. In in Blackbeard's cabin. Did you succeed? Of course. <laughs> did you wear a Sea of Thieves t-shirt? No, no, I didn't want to. I had a, I had a rare pin. I wanted to see if they were like properly, you know, looking and paying attention. But um, yeah, they didn't spot it. No, I didn't want to go in like with them knowing that I was into into pirates. You know? I'm just must be shameless then. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a social like compared to all of us, aren't you? You're like, actually going yeah, out, might have cut this yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a rooftop party. <laughs> 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 I, I rode up to the Peak District on my motorbike and stayed there ah. and, and met a Sea of Thieves fan who was working in the pub that I went into to eat and he saw my top he was like oh I've spent way too many hours playing that game and then he was like oh hold on uh, <laughs> uh, it was great chatting to him he was a lovely guy yeah. that's nice cool. so, there you go yeah I forgot about that yeah. I met a Sea of Thieves fan in the gym as well yeah. yeah he came over and said hello in the slip so shout out if you're watching remember their name it did not tell me his name. <laughs> Man who wanted the bench and dumbbells. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Xbox Bethesda broadcast showcase. Um, how did that go? 
Pretty yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, what was the run up to? Press play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That's like awesome. awesome. Yeah, and the run up to it. So let's let's talk about like the trailer all up kind of thing. Like, what was our our thinking? Because usually we start these things months and months and months and months before. Yeah. Right. So what was what was our thinking? What were some of the problems we worked through with that? Compared to yeah. a lot of updates we've done in the past, um, captaincy. It's not. It's not a new world region. It's not a new AI creature. It's not a new world event. So it's more of a concept. It's a way of life. It's a way of representing yourself in the Sea of Thieves. At its core, it's about it's an extension of being the pirate you want to be. It's the all shit being extension of who you are as a pirate and it reflecting your journey. So it's not just naming the crest. It's your progression being shown through the ship and being extended through the ship. So I think for a players who have been with us for some time they they at least have a good idea in their mind about what captaincy is but i think for a more casual sea of these audience and beyond that it's actually quite challenging when you think about it in terms of how you wrap that concept into a trailer that's understandable because it's the ship that changes it's not the rest of the world you're enjoying the world in a new way so i think and I'll, I'll let John jump in in a second on where we land with the idea for this. But I think it came from a place of what's the best way we can show off captaincy and share air excitement for how it fundamentally will change every Sea of Thieves session. So it's like, how do we capture that in a bite-sized trailer that's going to get people talking and get people excited? And in a, in a, in, a, in a usual way, how can we put our rare spin on yeah. it, right? Yeah. I think that's the kind of the key thing that always comes to my mind first is like how do we put the rare stamp on it and so often that's like oh well how do we make it a bit funny a bit light at least anyway um and as i'm sure um most folk saw in the the run of the show it was like how do we make this light in the context of the, that whole show as well like what are we comparing ourselves to what's either side of this trailer how do we make ourselves memorable and stand out right exactly yeah. like yeah, yeah. um and it was actually paul cunningham that came up with the idea of a song my initial idea was like a narrator sort of um, bit, sort of tongue cheek breaking the fourth wall sort of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but then it was like, oh, well, we could do a song, and it's like, yeah. that's a great idea. Everybody like, jumps on that yeah. idea. What a cool novel way to introduce it. Yeah, exactly. And so then it kind of went from you and, and me sort of scribbling down lyrics and trying to get a, a kind of base structure there, and then taking that to Robin. And then Robin coming up with this brilliant melody for it. Yeah. And then a lot of back and forth after that as well. Yeah, like, a lot of pressure on that, though. So I think we definitely wanted a, a song that could cut through. Yeah. The idea of and it, the, the earworm. The earworm. earworm. We yeah. use that word so much. <laughs> the idea of creating an earworm. This has got to be something catchy that someone would hum after watching the showcase. It'd stick in players' minds. And the song itself be sort of joyous in the sense that it's a celebration of yeah. that feature set. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, to be a captain. You know, it's like you want that feeling coming out of the song. Yeah. So. Um. <laughs> Who's he? Who's he? Are you going to sing live? No, no. no. <laughs> but 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 that's it, right? And it was it was really challenging because I mean, we didn't have much time, and it's like mm, this yeah, is kind yeah. of in and amongst everything else we're doing, right? Like we're yeah. shipping seasons, yep. we're shipping up monthly updates, we're doing videos, and it's like there's there's you two plus um, Robin Beanland just going away and basically trying to come up with a musical like <laughs> as yeah. a side project and, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and um and make it so the lyrics work, they explain what's in it, and and make you laugh, make you smile, um like and I remember kind of after the first cut, I was like. I'm not sure we're going to make this. Like, I'm not sure we're going to make um, do this. And we gave it one more sort of shot because mm -hmm. we didn't have much time. Right? Yeah. No. Um, uh, and then you, yeah, you came back and just had absolutely nailed it. And it was like, yeah, we're in. Let's go. Yeah. And, um, I think like definitely relished the challenge of that because there wasn't much time. I think from what would have been a really cool, but I guess arguably a more traditional approach to introduce the feature set to this really novel approach, which we all jumped on. I think like the opportunity to write a catchy song and get it to Robin fast enough so he could score it, which yeah. is what we identified was really going to bring it to life. I mean, that was just a, a fun challenge, right? And yeah. yeah, I know you were a little bit concerned. I know, right? I was just Can like, we bring it together yeah, in that time? Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, it all came together. Because music as well is quite a, obviously, subjective thing. So it's yeah. like, you're finding something that all of us, just our, even our small group are all like, actually, that is quite quite good. Yeah, right. even humour. I mean, humour yeah, plays yeah. so differently with different people. It's like, how do we strike the right balance of 
informative mm. while still being funny and have that little kind of yeah that, that's a tricky one like explain this feature set through the lyrics please while also being humorous it's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and catchy right yeah. Yeah. So, to be fair when you came up with the um, the profanity uh, rhyming yeah, yeah, yeah. with vanity line you were like, you were like I've, I've this. that's the one I've absolutely that's the one it. but um, but it's really interesting as well because the process like it's not just us coming up with it and then we're done right? with it like as part of the the Xbox and Bethesda showcase there's there's regular reviews that start in like I don't know, February or like kind of kind of around that time where you first turn up with your kind of proposal and idea and you know they then they look at it all together but and I think we went in originally with a sort of safe proposal because we weren't sure yeah. about this one and then we sort of switched it out in March or April I guess uh, but but you have to then convince that wider group that doing a song is the right idea and it's going to be funny and that the jokes land right and um, so that that's always interesting especially when you're making little jokes about Game Pass and things right mm-hmm. so yeah. um, uh, but but Again, people looked at it and loved it and were just kind of, yeah, that's rare, that's Sea of Thieves. Um, so it kind of got through that process pretty smoothly. Remember that you sending me the first like draft of the, the song with you singing to it and it gave me proper Monty Python yes. vibes, which yeah. is exactly, I was like, yeah. nah, this is proper British humour, British musical. I think a few people it. said that, didn't they? Yeah. I think that's where yeah, we thought... Good. Yes. That, that, that feels right for us. We yeah. like rare as a studio and the t- tonally air we should feel. Yeah. And I think the... the, the the element you, we don't, I guess, always get to determine is kind of where it sits within that showcase. Yeah. And obviously that's part of the team pulling it together, right, to have the massive impact across all of the titles. Um, but I think we looked out there. We yeah. Actually following quite, you know, it was Diablo, wasn't it? So yeah. quite, quite a deliberately dark experience. <laughs> and then we just cut yeah. through with this kind of funny humorous tag. I think, I think that played to our advantage as well in terms of standing yeah. out. Honestly, seeing at home, I knew roughly where we were in the showcase, like time-wise, mm. and so, but you don't know for sure. But then when I saw a trailer where someone was just carrying a disembodied head, I was like, <laughs> I reckon we're after this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and lo and behold. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. And what were some of the reactions, like, online? Um, like, like, yeah, it's gone down really well, actually. Really, really yeah. well. Seen, mm. seen a lot of comments, I'm uh, sure you have as well, John, about just the catchiness of the song and a, a lot of players complaining that it's stuck in their head now, which is... Ultimately, sorry, but that was basically the goal, wasn't it? Um, and before we forget as well, like this is the this is us putting a face to the narrator. To the narrator. So that's um, yeah. voiced by very talented John McMurtry. So since right back at the start of Sea of Thieves, like the idea of having John be the singer and bring a face to that character is an absolute pleasure. Yeah. He's here now. We've he's got here. him. He's here. Mm-hmm. He's in the build. He's <laughs> Fully wrecked. This is it. He's going on a world tour. So. <laughs> it is funny you talk about it being catchy, though, because I remember I actually, like, you know, obviously getting everything ready on channels. Like, I watched a version of it before coming up to do the uh, the Lost Sands stream. I was genuinely humming it, and I was mm. genuinely worried that at some point you were just going to cut to me and I was just going to be singing it. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was genuinely yeah. stuck in my head. Yeah. But just, to, I mean, another thing to mention as well, and this 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 extends to Robin and the love and the care that goes into this was like we set ourselves a lot of challenges write, write a catchy tune that can explain and amplify what we're trying to say about captaincy it's got to cut through at an Xbox and Bethesda showcase um, but we also wanted to have it as a piece of music and a melody that we could then use yeah. to represent captaincy so Captains of Adventure which is the track which has essentially been kind of shrunk down for the trailer that will feature you know, when you first buy your ship and yeah. Pirate Lord introduces you to your new vessel. Like that music is front and centre in terms of the feel of captaincy. So yeah. Glad we glad we pulled it off or seemed to pull it off. Yeah. And you talked about Lost Sands, so that was a nice segue into talking talking a bit about that. Um so first of all, what was we had the reveal stream. We had the announce of what we actually saved Lost Sands. Like, so what? What has been the sentiment so far that we've seen out there from the saviour? Apart from obviously, well, obviously your bitterness. Obviously, it was rigged. <laughs> Absolutely, that can not. reveal exclusively. That would have, that, would have, that, that would have made it so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it certainly wasn't. I think it's interesting. I think it was quite a. It's a very new thing for us in terms of handing the choice over to the community and what we saw is ideally what we wanted to see right you want to see players choosing a side and getting passionate about their side and rallying their side and all the propaganda we saw the posters you know absolutely amazing you know the the friendly banter in the studio um it's 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 exactly what you want right it's 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 
players getting emotionally invested in the fate of the world from different perspectives. And I think, of course, like the fact that Golden Sands won, there's a whole other group of people that um, believed in the Reaper side and what it stood for, and they're going to feel a sense of disappointment. I do think as well, I think it'd be good to touch on this as part of this podcast, which is, I guess, the outward perception of what people thought the change would be. So I'll touch on it a little bit, but the the perception of if Golden Sand is saved, Golden Sand is saved and it just stays the way it was versus the Reapers promising more fundamental change. And I mentioned it on the live stream, but the way we've positioned these changes is that either result is going to drive, you know, significant change in our world. The fact that Golden Sand has been attacked and been defended has happened now so the way characters in the game think about Golden Sands is going to change. And likewise, the way Flame Heart will go away and regroup now and how that will affect our ongoing story. I mean, these are seismic changes. So it's been interesting to see, I guess, what players were reading into, what it meant to choose. And I think there's definitely a learning there um, in terms of not outright saying if option A wins, here's a bullet point list. If option B is a bullet point list of what's going to happen. But I guess being more kind of overt with um, what conflicting characters want from the outcome. I think we can make that feel immersive and part of our world building, but, but just be a little bit more upfront. And it's the first time as well. So when people see this play out over several months, at least next time we get to one of these big community changes, I think the feel of that impact will be a little bit more clear as well in terms of what it will drive. So... Yeah, as, as Christina's not here, I'll uh, I'll play the part of community voice then. Um, don't worry, she's back next time. Uh, <laughs> I guess are there any like other key learnings in terms of like you know presenting current progress to players in terms of like you know who's winning, who's not, and likewise like in terms of the design of the adventure. Obviously, we went with something quite asynchronous with this one, with Reapers using boats versus merit getting supplies are there any other like learnings within those two i've asked two questions no no, that, no, no that, that's great i mean th there is i mean first time we've ever done this um the fundamental design of it you know we've seen how that's played out at scale what what players what gravitated with players what seemed to not go down so well with players i think when we look to the future we'll we're already thinking it more in terms of a symmetrical approach where the activity for either side is the same, um, but you're choosing a different outcome. Rather than it being, well, I kind of want to side with the Reapers or Merrick, but I don't really like the gameplay that they're asking me to do. So it's this healthy balance of, we want it to make sense for the storytelling, but at the end of the day, it's got to be a fun gameplay experience. Yeah. It's still a game that we're presenting to players, so both sides need to be equally fun. Um, so that's something we've definitely taken away from Lost Sands. I think... And see in your second part of the question, which is the community discourse around wanting to see uh, either not seeing the update or seeing a more live update. I think we tried several things throughout Lost Sands. I think what feels right alongside the immersive in-game stuff, which we'll start touch on in a moment, is the, the snapshot approach where we keep the community updated with you know, the state of play at the start of the week or the state of play after a weekend or after a couple of days, but it's not like a live ticker. Because I think that I think that could have detrimental effects of how players engage with it. So after, a, you know, a big rallying cry for the Reapers, you know, on Monday there's a snapshot of the effect of what that's... And, and then the Merrick can then react to that. Yeah. So I think, I think the snapshot is the better way to present it rather than the more down to every statistic every second of the day. Are you also planning to, you know, not run the next one over a Platinum Jubilee weekend? So. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, there's probably not going to be another one. Either. Well, obviously <laughs> For a while. <laughs> 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 not sure what you're saying. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you also touched on, like, another interesting bit there, which I don't know if... Um, a lot of our players like caught on to the fact that you know Golden Sands, the visual mm. of, of Golden Sands was actually changing depending on what the state, um, whether it was like you know Reapers winning, stalemate or Merrick winning, and like that those live changes. Yeah. that's very new tech in Sea of Thieves. Very, very new, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, um, people are listening in, but I haven't really seen that being done in a, in a service before, in a live service or a game experience. But that is a service behind the scenes that we've built. For adventures, it's also how we deliver the mystery. So it's called the we call this thing the story service. And this essentially allows us to make quite seismic changes to the game while it's live. So 
Le seismic's your new favourite word, isn't it, Mike? Have I used that twice today? Yes, yeah. <laughs> did I use seismic twice? Yeah, I did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Only four times, though. <laughs> it's a great word. Isn't it weird to have a human brain? It works like seismic, yeah, okay. Yeah, so seismic changes that can happen <laughs> while the build is still live. Yeah. So things that are typically you take the game down for and people couldn't log in for, so big changes to our world, those things can already be present in the game and then we can toggle them on. So that's what players have been seeing with the mystery where we're waiting for certain actions to be completed by the community and then the world just changes. Um, so players will see that a lot as they go through um, the mystery and future mysteries, but we also employed it for the adventures. So really what it what we're excited about it for is it's essentially it's live storytelling it allows us to continue to tell stories in the more traditional way through the adventures and through character dialogue and voiceovers but then we can drive live changes based on community action so that it's, was one of the coolest things well sorry to interrupt that, no, that was no, one of the coolest I, things yeah. when there was people posting videos on twitter mm-hmm. of the fog yeah. actually gradually disappearing yeah. from golden sands yeah. and i was like in that, real time yeah as in well. real time after yeah. the stream right yeah, at that I was moment like, that's cool it that's is very cool and but. it's big it, it's it's big seismic things <laughs> but it's also small things as well not all seismic but the small <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny anymore <laughs> um, small things as well so in the in the mystery something as simple as a certain moment had been reached in the mystery, but then the footsteps appeared mm-hmm. on yeah. Sea Dog's Rest. Like, that is such a small example, but I think for us as creators, that is a... We can do some magical things with the story service. So what you're seeing is just the the tip of the iceberg with what we can do there. I won't say that again. I'm not... Don't... Call me a tip of the iceberg. If I mention iceberg again, I'm leaving. But we can scare them out of people as well can't we that's all I think yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, honestly with that kind of stuff we can just scare like everyone like, just, that's all I want to do like, it's, give me it's control a, interesting right? when you think of what this technology can do and what we thought about what was the right first mystery for us so we had some really interesting ideas that would really show off to your point the story service in a really interesting way and I think we've got so many ideas for future mysteries and as players will see it's it, it's a parallel story. We're storytelling with it, but it does kind of feed into the broader narrative of CFEs and what people are seeing unfold with adventures and seasons, even. Talking about mysteries, um, we're obviously filming this a few weeks before it goes out live, but where are we up to now, um, mystery-wise? Ooh, this is... Uh... So I, I'm just sense-checking myself in case. I need to be careful what I say. So players have found a skeleton at Sea Dog's Rest. And there's someone behind the scenes who appears to be leaving messages for them. So players have discovered a specific lantern in the shallows on Sea Dog's Rest that appears to be revealing clues in the world. So alongside these music boxes that have been appearing, by taking the clue from the music players have been scaring the world and finding clues using this lantern. And this is very much just the beginning. Um, and who you can trust and who's ultimately behind this, that's where, we, that's where we're rolling. <laughs> so was that aloof enough? Yeah. Well, how, are we, how are we feeling that, like, the, the pace at which people are solving it? Like, is it... It's, a, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because, like, it's very much designed... Um, to like leave space for conversation the thing that we want players to do is really um find those things in the game and be able to kind of stew on them and share theories and share ideas and like that's we're very intentionally leaving some breathing room a so people can talk b so people can catch up like these it, it's not meant to be you know because whereas when we drop an adventure people can go and play the adventure obviously we we do change things up with stuff like lost sands where you can con- play it over and over and keep con- contributing but yeah I, for me anyway it's like it's leaving that space for people to talk and discuss is like is important for the mystery because that fuels the mystery mm-hmm. It's interesting because I think this is the thing we're going to learn the most from as well, right? Yeah. Like just like we've got our assumptions and our thoughts and of how how it's going to play out and how it's going to roll out. But I think this because it's so different and so new, like how it, like exactly what the pace is and and the the mix of clues in and out of game yeah. and um, just 
how it fits in amongst all the other stuff that's going on as well, right? It's like, like because the thing is that there's so much stuff going on in Sea of Thieves all the time now with the adventures and seasons yeah. and like community days and so many things. So it's it's just fascinating to watch it and kind of, yeah. I think yeah, we'll learn so much from this. Yeah. You, you, you're right. I think it is so new and different. And it's, even from a design process, it's so different to creating an adventure or creating the content that players see in their seasons. It's not a a canned experience that we strive to perfect and then release. It's it's living and it's breathing and we're watching community interaction to James's point. So yeah, we'll already we've already learnt yeah. quite a bit, I would say, based on how out of game activities linked within game activities and the types of things that we'd want to do in the future. But really excited to see it begin to ramp as we head into the future months don't we and John spoiled that the singer in the trailer is actually yep. the killer sorry <laughs> it's <a> heartbreak <laughs> just feel the ending who, who, who paid him up yeah. <laughs> um, talking about adventures there as well oh, this is nice segues into to each one of these I'm um, doing a job for you yeah, yeah. I know <laughs> it's uh, we are now in the midst of the Forsaken Hunter. Forsaken Hunter, yeah. Um, and the new adventure there. In fact, before we touch on the actual adventure itself, like where will we get you yep. on the you, you. on the uh, podcast? What, is he leaving? In a second? <laughs> 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 He's got a train to catch. He doesn't, he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, let's talk about the trailers, the cinematic trailers. Huh? And like, yep. Talk about them. Talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, <man. laughs> Fantastically done, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, yeah, the cinematic trailers that we and the gameplay trailers that we release for each adventure are a lot of fun to work on. Um, we do the cinematic trailers with our partners real time, as we have been doing with all of our cinematics. Um, but they are an interesting challenge as well because. We're trying to obviously set, set up sort of a, a level of excitement. You're like, yo, what was going on? I need to get in and play this adventure um, without obviously spoiling something that is um, time limited and you know all that sort of stuff. But they're really cool because building upon the lore of Sea of Thieves is, is so much fun. Like, see the stuff we've been doing with, with Merrick mm -hmm. um, and the Dark Brethren and all that sort of stuff. That's, that's been really cool to sort of yeah. expand that beyond what we did in like A Pirate's Life. Yeah. Now, that the... the they're an absolute blast to work on. Mm. Obviously, getting to work with with John on these around what's the interesting thing we can latch on to to get mm. people excited as part of these lore trailers. But I think they are like a different window into the Sea of Thieves. It's lovely to yeah. see a more cinematic take on these intimate character moments between some of players' favourite characters. And we are trying to strike a balance as well of making them exciting for players who don't know those characters, both in the, the set piece and the scenarios of where we are. But I know I always I always share kind of early versions with you and you share your excitement for them. They're just an absolute blast to work on. They really are. Yeah, I think I think just to your point though, and I'll be the, do the boring business part because that's my job. Um, <laughs> that's what I bring, that's the energy I bring. <laughs> so that's the purse strings guy. But, um, <laughs> no, but, I've never heard that no, before. <laughs> the no, purse strings guy. No, as, I, as I grow mature into my EP role, I care more and more about the, <laughs> about the, the, the business. But... The, the the trainers cost like a not insignificant amount of money like on a yearly basis like doing twelve of those a year basically right Super and so, yeah and so so that balance of how we strike kind of teasing and kind of doing that but also trying to really excite and also be a bit clearer about what they're going to be going and doing or mm -hmm. what 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 mm -hmm. what this adventure is and stuff is going to be that balance because we really yeah. want to kind of continue exactly what you're doing about the world building and the characters and that kind of the intimacy between characters and stuff like like you talk about but but also how we kind of really drive that value and drive drive, drive people to watch it and 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 it brings them into the adventures right that's yeah. kind of the the sort of the the alternate purpose as opposed to just the the, the world and lord building right so yeah. um so it's, it's just a really interesting balance to, to kind of try and strike i think and, and one that as we look to the the future sort of trailers like it's going to be Kind of how do, how do we do that the best? Right? Yeah, exactly. I think that's, that's that is always the because obviously, as you know, Mike, we could probably we could go into the detail of like what this character has been doing. It's like, is it relevant? Mm -hmm. Like, no, yeah. not really. It's cool, but it's maybe not the most relevant thing for this particular adventure. That's you know only going to be there for two weeks. So that is a tricky balance to get right, actually. Um, but just from just from a storytelling perspective, like I think they're just so much fun to work on. Like whether when it's doing like the VO recording sessions yeah. that you and I are in, like so like all those amazing actors that we get to do the voices of the characters, finding a way to fit Shelley in there in each one as well. <laughs> like, um, yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. She, yeah. she can live. Um, <laughs> and, and there'll be like uh, by the end of this year, there's not an insignificant amount of of minutes to watch of those things. No, like, by the time we get to the end of the year, you could sit and watch like a half hour. I mean, it'll be like what they're about two minutes each. So yeah, you could watch about half an hour of full cinematic Sea of Thieves goodness. And like bargain. As, play, as players will have seen here with Adventure Five, The Forsaken Hunter, a lot of the threads that we've been teasing are really paying off now. So I think Adventure 5 out of all of the adventures so far has got the biggest lore reveals. Yeah. So I won't spoil it for players that haven't played it yet, but the, you'll see a lot of threads that continue, threads that began even before the adventure, the fate of certain characters, it, yeah, certain people coming back on the scene. Um, and as we look to the rest of this year with the rollout of adventures and the trailers we have planned, like it, we're really hitting our stride now with the storytelling. Yeah, and the next decision point is going to be amazing. I can't wait. Honestly, I cannot wait. <laughs> it's, but, yeah, it's a, it's a big one. It's a big one this year, the next one. So the learnings from Lost Sands we talked about earlier, I think are they're great to have because I think it's really going to help us in the finalising the design for the next big community choice because, it, yeah, it's a... It's a big one, seismic. And there's also a, <laughs> <laughs> and there's also a level of like, um, like complexity to the adventures. They, they do seem like, as I've noticed from the beginning of the year till now, like, you, like the team is really hitting their stride on like, mm -hmm. like the gameplay and, and design around the, the, the adventures. It's really cool to see them build up. But yeah. seeing the one that's after. I think the thing that we're all really proud of is they're all so different yeah, yeah and i think they speak to different types of taste for our players i think adventure five that's out now is the one that's most akin to a more traditional tall tale in sea of thieves it's got the quest book in there it's there's a bit of cerebral puzzle solving there's some great lore reveals it really feels like a a handcrafted story that leads you from place to place. But we've had things like, obviously, Lost Sands, which is doing a new thing with the community choice. We had the Shrouded Deep built around that huge set piece. So I think trying these different archetypal adventures, seeing what what, gra what different players gravitate towards, seeing how well um, you know players get on with them, I think that's going to feed into adventures that we plan towards the end of this year and into next year. But we've got lots already being worked on. Yeah. I think I think honestly the team has done incredible like, to to take this new sort of strategy and new approach and um, alongside seasons, but to to fold this in like I think I think it's amazing. It like exceeds the kind of I don't know the hopes and dreams or thoughts what that was in my yeah. head around what we could yeah. do with this right. And to do it so swiftly to be like six months into this new approach and to be really kind of like just to see it played out how it has the first kind of half of the year I think it's incredible. Right like, and. Um, just, yeah, honestly, yeah. Like, so congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I think it's brilliant, and, and I think uh, you know how it's rolled out, and to see the community and like like Lost Sands is obviously a, a real kind of highlight recently yeah, for yeah. it and, and stuff. And knowing as well what we've got to come, like we've got captaincy, obviously what we've uh, revealed, knowing what's to come for season eight, and alongside all these adventures, like the the, the you know the second half of this year is going to kind of blow people's minds. I think like, with the yeah. Yeah. decision points, the content that's coming in seasons and stuff. It's, the um, decision points yeah. are really interesting as well in the sense of engagement um, mm -hmm. with the community because I mean that was our even though we did it from our humble tavern here, that mm -hmm. stream that we did was our highest viewed, concurrent highest viewed stream we've mm -hmm. ever done on the Sea of Thieves Twitch channel. Like, so, so ooh, we should I have hired another monkey, shouldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, we no, dressed it up like the Reaper's oh. monkey. Like, that was a missed opportunity. Wasn't it? Was, well, yeah. But then you would have needed like something for the part, for the, for them to save Golden Sands. Like, what would they have had? Yeah, it'd a be... Crab? A crab. It could, a be, crab. It, it, it could be a crab. A little crab. It could be a crab. Or it could be, like... <laughs> a monkey and a crab like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or a monkey, yeah. like, in a little... Can we get a monkey and a crab for like, like a little, like, chiffon <laughs> thing, so it might look like a force ghost, like a little ghost. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh... <laughs> For the next one, then. Well, he's totally said, um, <laughs> like a massive crab. So we need a gimmick. And a massive monkey. A massive monkey. Just an inflatable one, just looming no, behind. No, 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 this, that's how we get more views. <laughs> that's, that's how we get like the best viewed clip on Twitch that week. And this uh, is exactly on. what all meetings are like. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty much different flavors. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you are right. Though. It was a, it, was it, <laughs> it was John, a, get on that for this. Yeah. The next decision point for him if we don't have animals. Or like, I think crustaceans. What you said, like in such a short amount of time, I think we've hit this 
rhythm now where we've got all these adventures planned and we're learning different things from them. And at the, you know, at the start of last year when we were, late like last year when we were planning this approach out, I think the challenge and the ambition was that it wasn't let's go change something we're doing over here and replace it with this. It was yeah. it was on top yeah. of what we were already doing. It was adding adventures and mysteries to our seasons, which players already understand well in terms of those three monthly releases with yeah. features that change the sandbox in new ways and give you new systems, new progression. So, like, I think that's been the challenge and the ambition. We should add it on top of the things we're already happy with. Um, but to see it, to see us hit our stride, I mean, we're already... In, not to say too much, but we've had meetings this week that take us all the way to next June and beyond in terms of where the storytelling is going to go. And there's that's the challenge with knowing where the decision points are and there's almost hypothetical option A, there's hypothetical op option B. You've got to play that out over at least six months so yeah. it feels satisfying. So it's a challenge, but yeah, so excited about where this is going. I'm pretty sure we're like spending more than we've ever spent as a as a studio on Sea of Thieves, like in terms of just like budget, dev, everything. Like I've been looking at it recently, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in a good way, yeah, 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 in a good yeah, way, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's great, like because yeah, like we're so in and invested, and like there's so much more, more opportunity in in the world, and like to keep growing this and get past, you know, we're, we're past thirty million, right, to kind of hit the next milestone and grow how many people are playing it every month and stuff so yeah it's great careful right. what you say don't get me on my soapbox because I'm going to eat up the rest of this podcast <laughs> I think, no, I think not many creators developers studios out there in the world get the opportunity that we have mm -hmm. of a world with a deep sense of world building and lore and it's not just a snapshot and then it's gone yeah. it's constantly evolving and we, we did that in our early years purely in terms of content um, but now we're really doing it a lot more readily in terms of the storytelling. And it really feels like that story is unfolding every month now. And that that is, I think everybody on the team, everyone on the design team, everyone recognises how much of a privilege that is. Yeah. We haven't got to go back in 20 years' time and do Star Wars Special Edition and change some stuff. It's, it's changing now. I don't know why I went to Star Wars. But <laughs> <laughs> it happens quite a lot. Mm -hmm. But, but honestly, and it feels to me like this is the best Sea of Thieves has ever been, like as a yes. live service, right? In terms of like the game growing, evolving, but all of these things to do all the time. It's just like there's always stuff to talk about, always stuff to watch, always stuff yeah. to play. It just feels as it should, I think, a live service, right? Like it's just it's just busy in the yeah. best sort of way, right? And like just sure. the, the studio itself feels like we're getting into that, this nice, really predictable rhythm of going through things and like delivering stuff. Like, um, yeah, it's like we're kind of past that point at the beginning where we're kind of chasing um, yeah. and then now we're just kind of like, oh, this is this is good and you get, you've got time to sit back and like review what you've done and make decisions about future content because that stuff's already planned out. So I think it's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I read a tweet this morning, I'll paraphrase it, um, but <laughs> it was, broadly it was in response to someone else talking about Sea of Thieves and someone basically just said kind of what you did, which is like how we update and evolve and how often we're doing it and how smoothly we're kind of doing it, like that we don't kind of get enough credit for it, as, as you know, so we'll give it to ourselves on our own, <laughs> on our own podcast. But no, but it's like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but honestly, like the, if you think of the last couple of years, especially right during this kind of pandemic, the fact that we've been working on Sea of Thieves for, um, for, for a while now, but the, the rhythm that we've got into and that regular regularity and the, the, the just the kind of tight-knit nature of the team and the relations between everybody and the the just the process everything like um has meant we've managed to deliver on all of our plans over the last kind of couple of years mm -hmm. right starting with the pirate's life yeah. was that huge thing but, during during covid yeah, yeah we're yeah. all working at home yeah and then shifting to this and everything like i think on, honestly i think it's an incredible achievement for the team like and you see how hard games development is in a remote environment like a fully remote environment you've seen it across so you know so many different titles that have kind of not kind of like least when they thought they were going to and stuff which is because it's super hard but yeah. but that just that kind of you know the relationships the understanding the kind of um the desire all of that kind of stuff that the team has i think i think it's incredible like what the what the team's managed to accomplish over the, the last couple of years especially so like kudos to everyone like, i'm trying to think of is there a big subject i've missed before we go into questions i can't think now we didn't give you an obvious segue, did we? No, we didn't. You didn't. And I don't have my last with me. Your own <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I was like, <laughs> that's how I think you were saying that. I was racking my brain. And like, <laughs> I can't remember. I will say it's not a community question, but obviously we touched on 
on captaincy and, and what we have. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, why, yeah. Why did, but we haven't asked everyone around the table what they would name their ship. Oh, good question. I didn't realise you were going to go there. I thought you were going to be like, could you give any teasers to it? Because we, we purposely aren't revealing loads of information yet because closer to the release date is when we'll actually get into that. So I'll let, I'll let Mike do the tease. Okay. Um, I don't think I've thought of a ship's name. So a bit of tease about a little bit of info about captaincy beyond what we've released so far, but not too much. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. So, so you like, that's enough. enough, enough. Yeah, enough. I'll just be like, <laughs> 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 before yeah. you do your tease, maybe it's a oh. chance to recap. What did we show in the trailer there? Mm. So we said you can name your ship. Yeah, we'd name your ship. We had the new interior customization. Mm. We alluded to, which I think where the tease can be around choosing your path. Mm -hmm. So I think mm. we've talked about Captain T for years. <laughs> and like, we, we've never said we weren't going to do it because we've always wanted to bring it to the game. Um, Beyond customising your ship and it feeling like your own, um, a big thing we've embraced, a big element of the design we've embraced is the idea of the ship really embodying who you are, who you are and what you stand for. So the way that you play the game um, unlocks new progression options that will be visually shown on your ship for others to appreciate as well, both near and far in the game world. So I think... Trying to encapsulate that in the trailer was quite hard, but that's what Choose Your Path represents. There's multiple paths that as a captain you'll be able to choose. And so it goes deeper than just customization. There's actually quite compelling new progression options that unlock when you own a ship. And of course you can own multiple ships and take different paths. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. I think John and I shared a moment where we were both about to break into Celine Dion when you were like near and far. <laughs> <laughs> we both looked at each other and had, had a little moment. Oh, <laughs> near far. <laughs> 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 um, um, yeah, I've, I've, I don't know what to call my ship. What are you going to call your ship, James? Start with yeah, you. The only name I have in my head right now is the Pesky Ferret. The Pesky <laughs> Ferret. That I works. don't know why, but just that cheeky works. sort of. Whenever I play, especially if I play like solo or like I'm not on someone else's crew, I just tend to like to find people and be mischievous and yeah. like sh bark questions at them and like ask them for trivia facts and like i'll just like throw loot at them if they answer me or fight them if they fight me yeah um so it'll probably be something like that will your mum get through the uh <laughs> 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 we're being chased by your mum like, like, uh, like, will, will i get food i think you will yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. there know you that. go that'll be that'll be one <laughs> <laughs> and just a little, little, little bit of trivia. So in the in the latest design playtests, and nobody's going to understand this. I apologise. This is like a is this a nineties reference? You have to tell me. But we did call the ship the old rag doll. Oh no, yeah, from Rosie and Jim. Rosie and Jim. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we're playing on the old rag doll. Uh, but no, I think so obviously you players can own multiple ships of different types. But I think my first two ships, um, I'd have one with the rare sails, obviously permanently saved. Nice little choice of rare cosmetics. I'd probably call it the rare treasure. Oh, the first one. Nice. So I'd one called the rare treasure, and then um, I'd have to do a sloop called the Mad Monkey ah. in honour of Monkey Island. I think that's where I'd go. Very cool. What about you? Fenton. 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 And you've got to have the. Uh, they call it the the Kato sales comment what they're called but um, good boy good boy good boy, boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. that's what you need yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be great. Yeah. I love that that's pretty good yeah. that's the thing you want it to be what like the reaction of others what they say yeah, makes it funny yeah, yeah. yeah like that's that's the that's great <laughs> yeah. so. that's a good one yeah. um, I don't know the one that I've said so many times I'm just looking at Joe because every time we talk about it, I'm like um, <sighs> so juvenile but I was like <laughs> The stinky stool was the one that I wanted. <laughs> uh, so I was just like, double meaning. Like, there you go. I hope our community are a little bit more kind of oh, you know, gonna, aspirational. Uh, sort of like pirate yeah. names. Pirate yeah. names yeah. I think there's going to be a mix. Well, yeah. a mix is good. <laughs> a mix, a day a mix one, is good. A day one is good. Plug thing, it'll be, it's morbid time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's yeah. Binley Mega Chippy going to fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bin, bin, Binley Mega Shippy. Yeah, Binley oh. Mega Shippy. Oh, come on. B3 missed opportunity. Yeah, that is a missed opportunity. Huge missed opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, that, uh, but honestly, I think that you'll get that mix because oh, yeah. like, yeah. we want the mix, right? Yeah, we want no, the totally mix. Right. It's yeah. uh, the main thing is like those 
the name is just become synonymous with the ship's progress and what it's done in the world. And I think that's the powerful part and how you choose to represent yourself. The name is just another way to do that. So if you want to have the the funny ship and put all the kind of light-hearted uh, customizations on it and be that reflect how you play in the game, I think that's the main thing, right? It's the ship is the extension of your identity. Um, and the ship is what you use in all your adventures. So it's going to be cool. So I can't wait to see yeah, the stinky stool on the seat. <laughs> I'm, I'm just honest, I'm imagining the people using the um, the, the speaking trumpet to just shout Fenton while they're chasing it. Fenton, chasing it. Like, brilliant. So yeah. Just at the ship sitting with no one on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice thing to, to, to confirm as well, but when you obviously when you look through the spyglass at a ship at distance, yeah. the banners will come in. Yeah. So you don't just have to be very close to the ship to be able to read the crest on the back or on the ship. We will be bringing those those banners banners in and those banners will reflect the the path that you've chosen Fenton (laughs) (laughs) just thought of that just now so I'm I'm definitely (laughs) going to get Um, questions have we got I will I will seamlessly seamlessly pull up some questions just a couple Um, well what else did we see there was that there was a single cash end point for all your loot Mike there is yeah a lot more to reveal about that there is yeah Deliberately nice centered nice cap, capstans as well. Yeah, you saw that. You saw the screen grab. Yeah, they put that in there. Yeah. So the the way we've yeah, there's there's so much to talk about here, and we can save it when mm, we when yeah. we dig into captaincy in the future. But the, a lot of the thinking is around being a captain, meaning something in the world, and bringing in extra conveniences. So as a captain, if you were a captain in a pirate world, you're you're a VIP, right? You're an important person in that world. Um, so you get exclusive perks that other players don't get, but they aspire to own a ship, so they get access to these things. But the um, there's a new set of characters coming in called the Sovereigns, and these characters deal exclusively with captains, and players will be able to take their treasure directly to them. Players saw the little lift and there's a little harpoon on there, so offloading treasure becomes more convenient. But I won't say too much, but... They sound the elitist. Sov- sov- they are very elitist. So they've got they they've got the 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 wigs and the powdered faces. They're definitely pirates who've been paid off in some way. So I would I would just say take a close look at the sovereigns because there's definitely some clues on what their motivation is and what they're trying to accomplish. So yeah, <laughs> just a couple of quick questions. Um, one from Bob Joe says, "Will captaincy ever be added?" <laughs> No. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, but... Deadly Dorito, 1213, to give him the full title, says, how do you guys create the story for Sea of Thieves, and, um, but also how can pirates keep up with the story? So I guess, you know, if you've got two weeks... Yeah, you, I mean, this is a great... That's, uh, if that's, you want to talk that's a great it. question. Dim the lights. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Um, I get together with um, Chris Davies and uh, Chris Alcock, who wrote a novel, and we spend a good couple of hours in a, in, a, in a meeting room together and we just talk about what, like, thematically where we want to take Sea of Thieves. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of thinking for the future years that we've had in our heads for, for years. Um, but it's really fleshing that out at a more detailed level. So we start with, what's the story of 2022? What's the story of 2023? Where are we going to take the Sea of Thieves world? And then we kind of break that up into, I guess, beats, and events that happen, and they form the high level for what become the adventure designs. They're the episodes that get toward that broader story. Um, and then at that level, we we work with the designers on trying to pick the right gameplay to bring that story to life. So it's a it's a really cool process. Cool. Yeah, and you, but you have to fold in as well, like your understanding of where the game mechanics are going to, right? Like, yeah. And yeah, I mean yeah. that that's a that's a big thing with trying to make them sit seamlessly alongside seasons so knowing when adventures are coming in and then being after certain seasons knowing we can rely on um the new functionality that we're adding because they're a great way just beyond the story to showcase the mechanics in new and interesting ways that players <laughs> haven't seen before and really like put them on a pedestal by showcasing them um so that's why we get together and we just talk about the story because essentially we're weaving the tapestry like what what we start with what's coming in with what we already got planned for seasons what are the hanging threads we've got with their storyline and how can we pull all that together but also of course how can we 
surprise and it not play it exactly the way people would think um, to keep people guessing and keep them emotionally invested. There was an interesting second part to his question there yep. about um, how would someone keep up with the story? Mm. Yeah, so this is, we've talked about this on the podcast before. I mean, there's there's more functional answers to that, which is we, we want to get video playback on the front end, which we desperately want to be able to do that. So like you said, at the end of this year, they can go back and they can watch all of the trailers that we've yeah. created and we can host richer content on the front end. And that'd be an inspiration for what you could play. I think that'll just get more value at this, all the effort that we're pouring into these trailers. So th there's that. There's also the way we design the adventures. So ensuring that we weave in several narratives. So there's natural jumping on points for other players. We're also, and again, I don't want to tease too much, but there's definitely characters that we're thinking of for this year that play a more informative role. So um, much like Umbra, expanding on the idea of Umbra, but it's not Umbra. So characters that basically bring you up to speed with what's been happening in the Sea of Thieves world. Is it John's character? Yeah. It isn't, but through the method of song, that'd be really nice, wouldn't it? It would be, <laughs> it would be like cool. The, the it story would... so far, but as a song. Yeah. There's, a little, yeah. the, the, like every... there's a little There's a little link there it's with, like with one on, of the characters. Early on in Thor Ragnarok, where he goes and he sees like the people doing the silly play of like, oh, the yeah. end of Thor 2, is your character doing that? But, but... Yeah. <laughs> Just in every time. It's a really tricky balance with trying to pay off the threads that are super engaged. Just, they just want, where's this character? Where have they been this whole time? We want to see an end to this, but you've also got to deliver it in a way that makes someone who's less invested or hasn't yet really discovered the law, they're just playing for the core gameplay, a reason to be involved. So it brings it to life for them. So that that's a in those meetings that we have when we're planning set, that's the balancing act that we're trying to... Well, that's the thing. There's still story threads from like end of 2019 to... There is. There is. There's lots of... Um, I guess ultimately what Flameheart is trying to do um, is... A little bit clearer now with the events of Lost Sands and obviously with Shredded Islands, but yeah, there'll there'll be a revisiting, I would say, of some kind of classic storytelling from Sea of Thieves from a few years ago and really paying off yeah. that in a surprising way. I do think there's a lot of stuff we can do out of game though, like a joke about yeah, doing yeah. like a story so far, regular yeah. kind of recap yeah. or something like that. Should we be. do? Sorry. What? No, no, but like in video form, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, yeah, yeah, no, in video form, yeah. like, a, like in terms of, you know, we've got, like you say, 30 minutes that we'll have at the end of the year, we uh -huh. could do a shortened version, but with a voiceover kind of yeah, showing can, the highlights and stuff like that. You could do some like sort of yeah. stuff to, like, lay yeah. them together, but nicer yeah. as well, yeah. which yeah. would be cool. So, yeah, don't worry, I read the story so far. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I was about to say, I'm I'm to speed, so. say, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that, yeah, 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 yeah we do yeah. do the recaps yeah. on the website, which are penned by Chris Alcott, so, yeah, yeah. It's a, so, it's a balance, right? It's, yeah. it's really accessible kind of repositories like that, right, that you mm -hmm. can access. But I think doing it in-game immersively through characters. Yeah. I mean, this is not on our roadmap anywhere, but I would love to do this in the future where you can go into the taverns and there is like the version of Encyclopedia Britannica and it is like just the history <laughs> of the Sea of Thieves that you can just read through mm -hmm. like a book. And having books like that on the ship, that is something that is a lovely idea. Um, it's not on the roadmap currently. Uh, but I think there's, that's an example of ways that we could do that in the game that feel immersive. And the people that want to get up to speed, they can in a really easy way. Mm -hmm. I think, can I ask one more? Yeah. Like Lord, Lord Whisper asked, Ooh. and you're talking about old character. you're talking about characters um, that we've seen. Um, he'd like to know where Stitcher Jim is, or if he'll ever come back. Last time we saw him was in the Heart of Fire Under the Devil's Thirst. Yeah, so he's still down there. He just, yeah, lost his footing and... His story's over. He's never coming back. Ever. Never. No. Ever. No. Oh, Off screen. Into the lava. <laughs> Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space. He's out there somewhere. In the Scorched Gems. Yeah, it's yeah. Right yeah. What's quite, his new name. Scorched Gems. Yeah, it's, but the, there's it's the thing that It's very raw. It's very raw. It's very raw. What's the bit that Anakin, like Obi-Wan says as he goes to you, you'll never make the jump or what? I have the high ground. I have the high ground. I have the high ground. You'll, you'll never make the jump. You'll never make the jump. Watch your foot in there. This is why I don't write scripts. I have a bump. You'll never make that jump. That's the lie. Yeah, that's the lie. Yeah, that's the lie. You'll never make the jump. That's the lie. Yeah, that's the lie. I am higher than you, Adam. I have an elevated position. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, well, <laughs> the heat's got to us. Yeah, the heat's got to us. <laughs> on, uh, on that uh, note, we're going to end this. But yes, you can watch us on YouTube, any of the podcasts or any of the stuff that we've been watching, the 
Forsaken Hunter trailer. If you haven't done that, get over there on YouTube and watch the Forsaken Hunter trailer. And if you haven't played it, obviously jump in and, and play the Forsaken Hunter. It's live right now. Um, assuming you watch now when it's live <laughs> and not later on. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you've got uh, the video on YouTube or you can listen to us in a reputable podcast app. Remember, hashtag SOT podcast if you want your questions right out on the, the next podcast. You can now watch us on Spotify as well. Oh. Yep. Yeah. There you go. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it, you can, will it be like when you're on your phone and it's on like the screen when you're listening to music and it's got like us doing all like just 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 like a loop and you take your laptop out, book to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, if, if not, that's what I want. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. well, we could do that, couldn't we? Just, yeah. well, I mean, we, we have definitely some just coloured lights over us. And we so have definitely just captured you doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can look at that no matter what. <laughs> that's the thumbnail. Yeah. 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 We had that from a previous one anyway, didn't yeah. we? Like, Ooh, we're going back in time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's us. That's us for for this month, and we will see you. We'll see you next one. So thank you very much for everybody here, and thank you for listening. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you just saw and want to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news, then hit subscribe and click that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers.